All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to this second part of the demo on running Docker. But in this case, instead of just using Docker in an EC2 instance, what I'm going to do is create a Docker image with Selenium inside. And you can run Selenium. I mean, yeah, you can run Selenium in an EC2 instance with a Docker container that, um, that already has a Selenium and Chrome driver inside. Well, it's actually it doesn't have Selenium. It's a Selenium, sorry, it's a Chrome driver standalone or, well, uh, it's a Selenium standalone. So basically you will start running a container that will allow you to connect Selenium in an EC2 instance. And that's basically the first thing that I'm going to do. Then I will come back to my local machine and I will create the Docker image. But just for you to know that, yeah, you can um, you can start using Selenium without uh, without actually uh, running that inside the container. So let me show you what I mean. First of all, let me open let me open my EC2 instance. In this case, GP2 instances, and I think I'm gonna I had to connect to this one, which is the one that I used in a previous. Uh, in a previous demo. So you know that if you want to connect to an EC2 instance, you can simply go to connect and copy this, paste that in the terminal and we're good to go. Oh, sorry, I uh, need to change my directories because right now I'm in home, but I have to go to this folder, a core teaching to go to a core test, PEM, which, which is the key that we need to SSH to the terminal. So let's connect to the EC2 instance. Good. And just to, uh, just to let you know that Docker is, is already installed in this EC2 instance. I'm going to type. I think you're not Docker. showing your screen. I'm sorry? You're not showing your screen. Or, or are you? <laughs> OK. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. So sorry about that. All right. So once again, what I've been doing was basically everything that I said, but now you can see that I'm connected to my Ubuntu EC2 instance. All right, thank you for letting me know that I wasn't sharing and I could spend the rest of the demo without showing anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to show you that this EC2 instance has Docker installed already. And I'm just going to type Docker help. And yeah, it's... Um, Oh, I actually, I actually said help, but um, it understood me. Nice. Okay, so yeah, Docker is already installed. So what you can do to use Selenium um, without actually installing like Chrome driver, actually installing uh, everything in your, in your EC2 instance will be, first of all, uh, you can just type Selenium Docker something like that. And yeah, the first one, well, actually, uh, let's go with a, let's go to Docker Hub just to be a little bit more thorough from this. So I'm going to open Docker Hub. I'm going to look for an image that contains the standalone that I was mentioning earlier. So in this case, I'm going to type uh, do, 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 Selenium. And yeah, I'm gonna go with the Chrome one, with the standalone Chrome. If it wants to open, yeah, this should be the name of the image. But you can click on this link just to give, just to get some documentation. And in this case, yeah, I'm gonna use Chrome. Okay, so this is going to be the container that I'm going to be running. Let's go back to my EC2 instance here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Oh, no, that's not allowed me to zoom. Sorry. Well, uh, can you see my screen well? I mean, can you see it? Yep, cool. All right, so in that case, let's keep going. Okay, oh, sorry, I need to use sudo. All right, so now it's installing this, uh, well, it's downloading that image and it's going to run as soon as the, the image is downloaded. What this is going to do is going to be basically allowing your scraper to use Selenium. 
and it does it by let's say opening a port and that port will be connected to yeah it will be connected to the to any to the chrome browser that you are not going to see but it's still there it's going to be contained in the container but let's see if it uh, if it's in if it installs cool and in this is it instance let's take a look at what we have we have animal scraper let's take a look at that animal scraper and yeah basically we have animal scraper.py recommend.txt scraper.py and i'm not gonna run that in my ec2 instance i'm gonna run that in my local computer just to just to let you know what um what this application is going to do so i'm gonna go to my desktop i'm gonna go here and yeah this um this terminal here is basically in my local machine so let's take a look at what we have yeah once again here we have animal scraper so uh i'm gonna move to that and here we have for example yeah we have animal scraper let's take a look at animal scraper so nano animal scraper dot pi cool this is going to be it's going to well don't worry about what what it has behind the scenes basically it will go to a website it will download images of a certain animal so in this case i'm gonna make it i'm not gonna make it headless just to let you see what happens if i run that and should work fine and i'm going to download images of koalas good so yeah it's downloading the latest version of chrome driver and now chrome is opening it will open some files some um some images of koalas and oh sorry um sorry actually i need to remove because i've already have uh, I already had a a folder called Koala here. Now I just need to remove that. Sorry about it. Um, what's going on? Oh, I type M R. Oh no! Yes, yes. Permissions denied. Oh come on. Pseudo. There you go. Okay, so yeah, koala is not there anymore. <laughs> Sorry about it. Should have chosen another animal. Good. All right, so now all the images have been downloaded. And oh, I forgot to I forgot to add a driver close, but um, yeah. If I go to Animal Scraper, I should be able to see koalas. All right, so let's take a look. Yep, so cute, nice. All right, so that's basically what the application is doing, just downloading images of different animals. And that's what we are going to do in the EC2 instance. So right now, as I was mentioning earlier, we have this container, which is the standalone for Chrome. So we are going to be able to use Chrome, but without using the web driver, which sometimes might be a little bit annoying. So uh, what I'm going to do now is going to show you Animal Scraper and see what is inside Animal Scraper. Um, oh, sorry, not Animal Scraper, not Animal Scraper. I wanted to see Scraper.py, which is the is the helper function with sorry the helper module with all the functions and classes so in this case uh, um, yeah here in this case we are using chrome driver manager chrome um, the the driver as web driver chrome and yeah as i mentioned earlier sometimes it can, it can be annoying to download everything so instead of that this um, this container that I just uh, that is running on the background can help avoiding all of that. 
So let's take a look at the documentation and see what we have to include in the file. So do, 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 do. let's see if I can find it. Otherwise, otherwise I will need to find it in. Oh, I can't remember right now what was the. Okay, let me let me just look for it on Stack Overflow. So we have uh, so let me stand alone. Um, stand alone. Python. Here, let's see if this one is helping us. Oh, sorry. Probably I, I should write. Probably I should write Docker. Would make it much easier. Oh, this is in Spanish. Q. There we go. So this is what we have to include in our code. So basically, uh, from Chrome driver, with driver desired capabilities, and just use this. Now, what this is going to do is going to be basically connecting to the container that we are that is running on the background, and Yep, that's basically it. Instead of just connecting to to your browser, it's going to connect to that. Oh. It's going to be basically connected to to that container. Okay, and it should be. Driver and let me see if something is missing. Less option. Oh, don't like these editors. Okay. Options dot dot argument. In this case, we should add. Headless mode. Should, that should do it. And just wondering if we have two to set capabilities. That should do it. Okay. And options should be options. Let's see if it works. All right, so once again, let me show you what, I, what I've done now. Um, what, we had, uh, what we had earlier was basically uh, webdriver.chrome. So we needed to install like Chrome driver, we needed to install Google Chrome. And sometimes, as I was mentioning, installing Google Chrome in an EC2 instance is a little bit tricky or at least it's a little bit annoying. So I replaced that line for webdriver.remote and this remote is going to connect to this, uh, to this URL, so to speak, to being able to connect to different websites. And yeah, you can see that this is basically connected to the local host and port 4444, which is the one that our, here this, which is the one which is the port that our Docker container is showing to, to the EC2 instance. Okay, so let's see if it works. Let's see if I don't, I didn't miss anything. Yeah. Oops. Uh, yeah, sorry. Any, oh, any question? Okay, so far so good. Well, I, I, I could just remove that. I forgot to remove that. All right, cool. Looks like it's working fine. And, oh yeah, in this case, I had it one ounce because I forgot to, yeah, if we take a look at uh, Animal Scraper, I forgot to use an, an, a, an user input. It directly, directly looks for iguanas. 
But yeah, it's working fine. And the point with this is that if you need to use Selenium in an EC2 instance, you can always use a Docker standalone container just to do so. And you don't have to worry about installing Google Chrome and installing Chrome driver. And you could see that I just did it in around 15 minutes. Well, a little bit, a little bit more probably because I forgot how to use this part, but um, yeah, it's super simple and minimal effort. Okay, but in so many, in, on some other cases, you will need to yeah, create the Docker container just to containerize your whole application. And maybe your application will depend on Selenium. So one of the problems that you might have when you are creating a Docker container is that you have to install all the dependencies inside that container. They are not going to depend on whatever you have installed outside of your, uh, on your machine. So for example, if uh, in my case, I've already got Chrome driver, I've already got uh, Google Chrome, but my container will not be able to get access to Google, to Google Chrome, for example. So that's, uh, that's an issue because, um, yeah, we need Chrome driver at least. Oh, sorry. We need uh, Google Chrome to be able to, sorry, we need uh, Chrome, sorry. We, <laughs> ah, sorry, let me start over. So we need Google Chrome inside our container. So our application is able to use it and connect to a, to a browser. So what we need to do in that case, we'll be installing Google Chrome inside the container. And in order to do so, we need to modify the Docker file. So one of the steps or one of the many steps that we need to take will consist on installing that uh, Google Chrome. So let's see how to do so. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. I'm just gonna minimize this. Going to go to yeah, teaching, animal scraper again, and let me remove this just in case, move the trash. Okay, and I'm gonna create here in this folder, I'm gonna create a Docker file. Cool. Okay, so now we can start modifying it. Where is it? Where did I put this? Here. Okay. Hmm, and one thing that I wanted to show you before I before I start with that is this file here. Actually, can I merge them? No. Anyway, okay. So this is a set of instructions that I have prepared in case you want to follow along. Um, you will see that on the content on one of the practicals. So don't worry if um don't worry now if um you feel like this is a little bit rushed. Uh, I'm just going to explain basically what's going on at each of the steps. And yeah, when the time comes, you don't have to worry about how to do the practical. This is a this is going to be a short demo on how to do it. But um, yeah, still, we, we encourage you to do it on your own. So yeah, once again, this is the set steps that you have to take in order to create the uh, in order to create the Docker image that contains Google Chrome and Chrome driver inside the container. So the I have first a question. Thing, yep. Can we not pull uh, Selenium's image in the Docker file or something, and um, use that instead of having to download everything? Yeah, that would be that would be an idea. That would be a, actually that would be a great idea. Now the now the only issue that you have is that, um, yeah, you you will still need to connect both well that container to your application inside. The, the container, does that make sense? So it will be I like- some only got a port on it. Yep, yeah, but well, I mean, you could do that. You could do that uh, more easily if you use a Docker Compose, which basically con uh, which yeah. basically co communicates both containers. But in this case, uh, if you just want to have like, let's say an, a, a standalone container without worrying about, uh, any dependencies that has to be probably set by the user, then this will make the this will make a quick well probably not quick but will provide an easy solution for the user. But yeah, you're completely right. This um you could also pull the 
the Selenium image inside these, uh, this image that we are going to create. Great. <coughs> cool. Yeah, but, and yeah, but also one, one of the things that I want to show you here is that uh, ba basically the very basics on how to create Docker images. So you know how everything works behind the scenes. Yeah, great. Cool. All right. Yeah, but um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for the question. That's actually really, uh, really useful. Okay, so the first step will be pulling a Python image. In this case, I'm just going to pull the Python 3.8. So from Python and the tag is going to be 3.8. Then it's going to ask me to add the trusting keys to our repositories. So as I mentioned yesterday, when you install something from, from a repository in Ubuntu or in a Linux distribution, you have to make sure that, um, well, the repository have, has to make sure that you have the correct credentials. So this key is going to provide us with those credentials. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a run, a command run to, yeah, to run this, um, yeah, to run this command. And we are not finished yet. So I'm just gonna add a backslash here and I'm gonna add more instructions that we can take a look here. So the next thing will be add Google Chrome. And to do so, we, we can just copy this. Do, 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 do. Let me explain what this means. Basically, I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna run this shell command that is going to go to this URL and basically it's going to, yeah, we are going to basically download, well, sorry, not, I'm, we're not going to download anything yet. Um, we're just going to tell what's the repository corresponding to Google Chrome. And then we, are, we will be able to actually download Google Chrome using app get update and app get install. So yeah, this one is going to add um, the repository to our list of repositories. And these two commands are going to actually install Google Chrome. Just interrupt me if anything's not crystal clear, please. Mm -mm -mm. Get update and then we install it, what else, what else, what else? I just hope I don't run any across any error because installing this image is quite large and it takes a couple, it takes around five minutes to get everything done. So let's see if I, if I have everything correct. So the next thing is to download Chrome driver. Cool, so here, Basically, we are just getting this file, this chromedriver.zip, and we are going to get it from this URL. As you can see here, we are using a curl, which basically will take the latest version, or it's going to, yeah, it's going to fetch the latest version of Chrome driver. Do, 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 do. Well, basically all of this, all of this line will be translated into something like um, 97.9701 or something like that, which correspond basically to the latest version of Chrome driver. Okay, so once we download the zip file, we need to install something for unzipping it. And finally, I think finally, we are going to move the um, yeah, we are going to actually unzip that Chrome driver and move that to our path. So it's always, it's going to be always available within our code. Uh, let me check if everything is, yeah, copy application in a Docker image. Good, so copy everything to the main repository, I mean, sorry, to the main directory. I'm going to install the requirements. So run pip install r for asin requirements requirements.txt and 
finally run the application. So I'm gonna go with command. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, sorry. Python three, and the name of the file was. Let me take a look. Animal scraper gives Docker file. So we need to run animal scraper dot py. Cool. And before I build the image, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is is working fine. So headless mode should be true because remember that we are working inside the container and it's not going to display anything. So if we don't set the headless mode as true, it's going to show some errors. And the other thing that I want to show you is that you have to add some arguments to your scraper uh, or, or to your Selenium window. So you have to disable this uh, development usage, no sandbox, and while this is not, I think this is not mandatory setting the window size, but for some reason, sometimes doesn't work if you don't specify the window size. Not sure why, but it works. Okay, so that was basically it. Let me save it. Enter the animal world. Do, 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 do. Good. All right. Let's cross fingers and let's build the image. Oops. Sorry. Hey, Ivan. Yep. I think. You might be missing a slash in your Docker file. Oh, thanks, thanks. I think after the fourth run command. Oh my god! Thank you so much. <laughs> sure. uh, edit. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, Matthias. All right, so I think that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Let's cross fingers because otherwise, I mean, if it doesn't work. Uh, we are going to take like four more, five more minutes to wait for it to be built. So let's go to the terminal and it's gonna build this image. So I'm gonna go with sudo docker build, I'm gonna call it animal ai core and run this directory. Yeah. Cool. So this is going to take a while to be downloaded. I mean, sorry, to be built. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do, just to show you how to start over from an EC2 instance, I know that I did the same thing yesterday, but this is going to take a while. So why not taking this time to do something useful? Well, unless you have any, any question. Well, I mean, you can still ask questions while I'm, while I'm doing this. This is something that I've done so many times. Okay, do, 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 do. So I'm gonna use security group, system one, I think. Uh, yeah, that's fine. My IP address, you can take a look at that if you want. <laughs> And I'm going to use air core test. Good. All right. So now, yeah, we have to wait a couple of things. First, the, first the instance to launch and then the image to be built. OK, so any anything you want to share with us? Any any comment? Any any issue? How's the course going? Any I don't know any joke? Well, yeah. Always remember to <laughs> once you're done with your project in easy to instance, if you are not going to use it anymore, just stop it. Don't be like me, just running them just for the sake of, um, yeah, it looks like I'm fletching on EC2 instances. Okay, so yeah, it's ready to be connected. So let's connect to it. I'm just gonna go to another terminal and I'm gonna go to 
the air code teaching um, air code. Oh, oops, sorry. I'm going to go to the air code teaching folder, which is the one that contains the, the corresponding key that I'm going to use to SSH to the terminal. I think that should be fine. And yes. Oh, all right. So mm, this is a new, this is a completely new EC2 instance. So let's see if, um, if Docker is installed. It says that, yep, yeah, it's not installed. And yesterday I showed you how to install it from the website, but today I'm just gonna be lazy. I'm just gonna install it using this command. And wait, I think there was, do, 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 do. oh, sorry, I need to, I think I need to update everything. Um, sudo app install okay, app. Um, Wait, what? What's um? What happened here? Oh yeah, I need to yeah I need to upgrade everything. Oh, it. Yeah, in that case, yeah, I'm just gonna have to go to the website and install it with the instructions that I showed you yesterday. So once again, Docker install Ubuntu twenty oh four. Yep. Let's see how how long it takes to actually install it. To update everything, I need to install everything. Mm -mm -mm. In the meantime, this, yeah, this is still, I mean, the image is still building, so we have time. Good. Oh no. Good. Okay. I think that's it. I mean, installing Docker, it's, you can see that it's super fast, super simple. Uh, as, I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned yesterday, you don't have to worry about this part because this is just to uh, install a specific version. So when this is, once this is done, yeah, Docker will be installed in the EC2 instance. Oh yeah, this, it looks like it's about to finish. Now it's installing the requirements. Copy everything, pip install, and oof, let's um, knock, on, knock on wood. Let's see if it works. The first thing that I'm going to do is basically uh, running this uh, this Docker container locally just to see if it uh, if I'm not going to waste time like pushing it to Docker Hub and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go and say sudo docker run animal am4. Okay, so before I run this, can anybody tell me if I'm missing something? with this command? Because right now it will throw an error, regardless uh, of- Is it a dot at the end? Um, not necessarily, I mean, not in this case, because we are just basically running it. We are not going to, we don't have to specify any directory. Uh, maybe uh, colon latest? Uh, well, yeah, the, the, um, in this case, not necessary because if you don't specify the tag, it will go to the latest one. Okay, so let me run this and see what happens. Yep, exactly. It says that there's an error here because the yeah, end of line reached. And Broken. the problem is that it's not interactable. So the IT tag. Exactly. Good, let's see, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's, let's see if it works, please. And yes, all right. <laughs> oh, you might think that I didn't trust myself and you will be absolutely correct. 
All right, great. Now uh, we have installed, I mean, we have created, uh, we have downloaded the Cola images, but we don't have any way to find them now. And that's the problem with containers as well. And uh, one of the problems is that, yeah, once you run everything, they are stateless unless you specify a volume, but for now we are not going to worry about volumes. If you run a container and you finish running everything in that container, the container is going to, let's say, clean everything it had, except for the volume, as I mentioned earlier. But um, if it's not storing the volume, yep, it will, uh, it will basically delete everything on that container. So yeah, now it downloaded the images, but they, are, they have been deleted. That's an issue, that's, a, that's quite annoying, but there's a, there's a solution for that. Before we do that, I'm gonna push this image to Docker Hub, and then I'm gonna go to this EC2 instance and run it again. And I will show you a way to download it, sorry, to run it, and to see how to get files from that container in your local machine. So, Let's do so by saying first uh, sudo docker images and let's take a look. In this case, yeah, we have this animal uh, core, which we have to change the name. So it started with my username of the Docker hub. So we are going to run docker tag. First, we are going to give the image ID, copy. And then I'm gonna give my well a new name, always starting with my username. So animal scrape. Okay, so let's take a look. Did it work? Uh, yes, yes, it's working now. So I'm gonna push this image. Docker push. Yes. And Oh, I call it animal scraper instead of animal uh, core. Well, okay, so now it's pushing, it's been pushed to Docker Hub. In the meantime, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna check if Docker was installed here. Docker dash dash help. And yep, it's working fine. So I'm gonna run the image that I just, that I'm pushing now. So the name was, I'm gonna copy the name of the image and I'm gonna paste it here. And do, 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 things should be working. Let's see if it, at least if it works. I mean, if it downloads anything, yep, fine. As, as earlier, it will throw an error because it's not interruptible yet. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, let's see. I'm just, I'm just gonna go to Docker Hub just to show you that this image has been pushed properly. Yeah, take a look here. This is the one that I just pushed. This is the one that I pushed this morning just to check that the demo was running fine. And, yep. All right, almost there. Cool. all right, so it's working fine. Well, didn't work fine because um, I didn't make it interruptible, but it's supposed to be working fine. Now, this is um, this is a tricky part, or well, this is actually something that is very, very useful what I'm going to show you now. And this consists on, uh, sorry, let me just minimize it. This consists on running this container because right now I just run the image, it generates the container, but as soon as the application or as soon as the final command this one here, as soon as the final command finished, it just closed the container. So we can just take a look at the containers. If I say sudo docker uh, container ls, and you can see that there's no running containers. If I use the dash a to 
take a look at all the containers. Yeah, we can see that it has exit like one minute ago. So one thing that we can do to keep running a container even if the even if the command has finished is adding the D dash. I mean the D option. So I'm just gonna do that. Uh, run that. And in this case, what was the name? Did I, yeah. Cool. All right. So now, yeah, the container is running there. We can take a look at all the containers that we have. Oh, sorry. What's going on? Did I miss something? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Uh, um, I forgot to make it interactable as well. ITD. You can add as many options as you want with just a single dash. Remember that. Cool. And that should do. That should do it. Yeah. Now it's running. Let's take a look, just in case, without the a dash. Cool. So yeah, we have a container that has our application in inside. But is it really useful? Well, let's figure out. One thing that you can do when you have a container is getting uh, accessing that, I'm sorry, accessing to your container, uh, see if it were a different computer. And you can use the executable, uh, this command here, etsec. And now I'm just gonna say that, um, yeah, something like this. So if you run this to a Docker, etsec, bin bash, you will get inside that container. Oh, I need to specify the name of the container, of course. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I forgot to add the name of the container. You will get inside that container, opening bash. Uh, yep, yeah. no such container. Oh, sorry, it's that, that wasn't the container, that was the name of the image. So we are in interesting column, uh, which is the name of the container that you can see here. Interesting column, column, I don't know. Oh, sorry, and once again, ah, sorry. Once again, I forgot to add the IT to make it interactable. Nice. So you can see that we are in a different computer, so to speak, because it has changed. And basically we are in this, this container that you can see that it's, well, it has the same container, sorry, this stack here has the same container ID. And we can take a look at LS just to see what we have inside the container. Hey, we have an animal scraper, which is the one that we needed. Nice. So I'm gonna run Python 3 animal scraper koalas and there we have it so now let's take a, let's take a look back here and koala is there nice so let's exit here because yeah koala is inside the container but it's still not you can see that yeah it's still not in my ec2 instance so uh, since we have, since we still have that container running, we can copy files from within the container to our local machine. So we can just go with sudo docker cp as uh, in copy, then the name of the folder that you want to get. So in this case, call, I think it was like this. I, I have to check the syntax. I think it was like this. Oh yeah, uh, of course, the name of the container. So it was interesting, uh, what was the name? Interesting column, like this, I think. Mm. And now, yeah, we have koalas. All right, so just to finish, finish off, this part here, I mean this demo, I'm gonna copy this colors that we have in the EC2 instance to our local machine. So, do, 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 animal scraper. Yeah, colors not here. You can see that there's no 
a folder called koalas. So I'm just gonna use secure copy. I then I'm gonna. Uh, oh no, sorry. I need to go. I need to go back actually. Uh, unless yeah, I need to use the. Do, 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 I need to. I need to use this key to secure copy every. Uh, to secure copy one thing from the EC2 instance to my local file, to my local computer. Sorry. So I then the name of the key then the name of the is it twin sorry the instance in this case we were here in ubuntu blah 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 followed by colon and what we wanted to yeah what we wanted to copy koala it was koalas or koala koala and I'm, I want to copy in this same directory. Will it work? Okay, sorry. I need to make it. Oh yeah, sorry. I need to. I need to zip it. Yeah, it's not going to work because this is a a folder, and um, yeah, it's a folder. And if I try to copy it, a folder, it's not going to work. I need to compress it and then. Uh, move it, move it to my local machine. So instead of copying the whole folder, I'm just gonna copy a single one, call a zero, for example, that one. And there you go. So if I go to a call teaching, I should be able to see a koala or something. Here it is. Yay! All right. Good. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this image as I finish as I'm finishing the demo because yeah, who doesn't like koalas? So I hope you like the demo. I hope you find it uh, useful. And if you have any question, please let me know. Um, just gonna stop the recording now. Well, unless there's any other question, but since we are over time, I didn't want to take my, more of your time. Is there any question, guys? Um, can you just explain the last bit again? Yeah, uh, you mean do, 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 you mean getting the getting this image in my local computer? Oh, okay, okay. I think or, or any any other step. Just the EC2 instance bit, but uh, sorry, I didn't follow. Uh, okay, so the. All the last steps. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna explain a little bit the last steps. So I connected. Well, I got inside my EC2. Sorry, my Docker container, and that Docker container was in the EC2 instance. So then, in for my EC2 instance, what I did was copy a file that was inside my container, and I moved that outside the container using this command here. Okay, and then. I use a well. I went to my local machine, to this tab here, which is which corresponds to my local machine, and I use secure copy to get an image of a koala that was on that was on the EC2 instance, and I move it in my local machine. So I run this secure copy, then the name, uh, the name of my key, the name of the instance and the name of the file that I wanted to take. And the final argument is going to be the directory to where I want to move that file, or in this case, that image. So if instead of using a dot, I use some um, animal scraper. If I use that, yeah, that image is going to be moved to animal scraper. Here it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Cool. Um, any other question? Cool. I hope that um, hope that now you can use Selenium anywhere. Basically, I gave I gave you a lot of alternatives local locally using a standalone Chrome. Or even use a container that con that uh, has Google Chrome inside. Cool. 
Cool. Uh, if there are if there are no more questions, I'm gonna stop recording now.